Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. All right. All right. Let's talk about what is going on with all of these government programs. I'm recording this on uh, Monday, the 20th. Uh, you'll probably, I'll probably have this go live on the 23rd, and a lot of things could change by then, but things are moving fast. So what I'm going to go over here is the uh, $1,200 stimulus uh, check, direct deposit, the uh, EIDL grant, the PPP forgivable loan, and uh, unemployment benefits with the $600 per week kicker. All right. And uh, I'll definitely tell you which one I think uh, I, I'm the most optimistic about and which one I am the most excited about. So just a little bit of background in case you're unaware. March 27th, the CARES Act passed, and that was a, a big day because that was a $2.2 trillion uh, government package designed to uh, keep the economy going. And uh, everything I mentioned was a component of that, of that act. So with that act, independent contractors such as you and me, drivers, uh, we're uh, entitled, of course, to the $1,200 stimulus. That uh, goes out to everybody. But um, even though we're not legally employees in most states, uh, we're still entitled to get standard unemployment plus uh, uh, an additional $600 um, on top of that for f for four months. That's, a, that's like a $9,600 bonus on top of standard unemployment, which was extended to 39 weeks. So uh, that was pretty great. And then they had this thing called the EIDL, Economic Injury Disaster Loan. And supposedly we could apply for that and get a $10,000 grant, something we wouldn't have to pay back. And then the last uh, component was something called the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program. And with this, you needed to provide some documentation of what your payroll was, so how much you paid yourself based on the money you made driving for Uber and Lyft. And then um, you can multiply that by 2.5 and get a loan for that. So you could pay yourself for two and a half months, and that would be forgiven as long as you paid yourself, all right? So both, both the EIDL grant and the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, came out of the Small Business Administration, and the budget was uh, $350 billion. Okay, so where are we on these things? Let's take them one by one stimulus checks. So some payments have been made. Um, I, I have not gotten my payment yet. Um, you can now go to the irs.gov website uh, forward slash coronavirus forward slash get dash my dash payment. And uh, you can uh, input your direct deposit information and you can also find out what your status is. So I did that. I did that actually yesterday. And uh, actually on the 15th, on April 15th, I went in to put in my direct deposit information because they did not have that for me. And they said, great, they got it. Everything was cool. And then yesterday I checked uh, and, the, and my payment status says, we scheduled your check to be mailed on April 24th to the address we have on file for you. So who knows? Is, is this correct? Or were they correct in telling me that they did get my direct uh, deposit information? Who knows? Um, so if it gets mailed on the 24th, 
I should get it early next week. So we'll just wait and see. But it appears everyone is going to get who is supposed to get their uh, their twelve hundred dollars. Now, if if you haven't um, given them your direct deposit information, I recommend you do. I heard that they can only mail five million checks a week, and there's millions and millions of people, so that could delay things a month or two. So get your direct deposit information in so you can get your money faster. Okay, unemployment. So this is a big one because this is a big bunch of money. Uh, so let's let's look at the numbers here. In California, standard unemployment, you can get up to four, uh, $450 a week. Okay, so if we take $450 times 39 weeks, that's $17,550. Plus, if you take uh, 600 times 16 weeks, that's another $9,600 plus 9600. So that's $27,150 assuming you get the maximum benefit and assuming you can't find a job within 39 weeks. But that's a lot of money, $27,000. So this is not, you know, an insignificant uh, issue here. So what's happened is that um, because we are independent contractors, uh, our companies, Uber and Lyft and Postmate and DoorDash and Instacart and all these companies have not been putting any money into the, uh, you know, paying no payroll taxes. So it's up to the taxpayers, you and me, uh, to pay the unemployment benefits for independent contractors. So as a result of all that, the unemployment departments are not equipped to, uh, to, to process us. Um, they don't have any, any records on us as an employees, uh, employees do. So my recommendation has been to go ahead and apply. So I did apply about a month ago, <clears throat> and then last week I got a letter from the uh, Employment Development Department, uh, that's our California Unemployment Department, and they said, we uh, we classify you as zero benefits. So I said, great, so then you can apply for an appeal. So I did that. I appealed, and I sent in my 1099s and uh, wrote a nice little paragraph that said, uh, I'm entitled to benefits because of the CARES Act, and... Now we wait. Now what's happening uh, more recently is that many states are saying that they are building uh, new websites uh, for independent contractors. And we're supposed to wait and then apply through the new websites once they're done. So the one in California is supposed to be done on the 28th, which is in uh, eight days from today. And they're promising that once you apply, that they will have the money in your bank within one to two days. So if you applied on the 28th, that means that the, on the 30th, you would have money in your bank. And at that point, that would be $1,800 because that will have been three weeks. So it's promising, but very few things that we've been promised uh, actually have come to fruition. Um, if you're in, a, in a, st a state where they're saying, you know, wait and, uh, you know, use the new system, that's up to you. That's your call. I've never been a waiter, so I, I prefer to take action. So uh, I applied. I've appealed. I'm waiting for a response on my appeal. And uh, if I don't get paid by the 28th, then I will apply uh, through the, the new website. And whoever pays me first, great. That's what I'll, I'll actually say, okay, I'm, I'm actually getting money. And at that point, I'll just, <clears throat> I'll just cancel the other one. So... Uh, everybody's got to make make up their own decision uh, if you want to wait or if you want to apply uh, to two different uh, th through two different systems. Uh, totally up to you. Excuse me while I drink a little bit of water there. Okay, so that's it on uh, the unemployment uh, situation. Probably the most disappointing part of this whole thing was the EIDL. That was presented like, oh, wow, this is so great. We're going to be able to put $10,000 <clears> directly into our bank account. In fact, when you filled out the application, which I did three different times, uh, they asked for your, your bank account information. They asked for your, your, you know, your routing number, your account number, and the name of your bank. So it's like, wow, this is going to happen, man. This is cool. And then nothing happened. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Uh, we know of one driver, 
one driver, only one driver that has reported to us that they got $1,000 from this program. And she, it was on her second, second attempt. Um, so then I, after I heard her story, <clears throat> I went ahead and applied a third time. Nothing, nothing, and nothing. So uh, instead of getting $10,000, it suddenly became, no, you, we're not, you're not going to get a $10,000 grant. You're going to get $1,000 per employee. So since most of us are just one, one, one man shop, that would be $1,000. And that's what she got. But she's like the unicorn because um, no one else has gotten anything. Uh, she did share uh, an email she got from the SBA. It said, to ensure that the greatest number of applicants can receive assistance during this challenging time, the amount of your advance will be determined by the number of your pre-disaster employees. The advance will provide $1,000 per employee up to a maximum of $10,000. And this says you may be eligible for another another loan program, the Paycheck Protection Program, which is available through participating lenders. Below is a comparison of the two loans. All right. Very disappointing. When this thing first hit, there was like this giddy excitement that, gosh, everyone's going to get some money here. This is going to be great. Not so. Not so great. Two months into this thing and uh, no money. No money in Mr. J's uh, bank account. Okay, the last one is called the PPP, and this is the Paycheck Protection Program. And I'm looking at an article from CNBC. It says, small business loans top $296 billion and could reach the program's limit by the end of Wednesday. So this is last, uh, this was written on the 15th, which was Wednesday. So I think what happened was, that the Small Business Administration had the PPP loans, and then they came up with the EIDL as a way to give people money quickly, like in advance, to a PPP loan. So it all came from the same pot. And what happened was the PPP started loaning out big loans to big companies. Uh, Well, big in terms of the Small Business Administration, way bigger than you and me as, as as drivers. And they ran out of money. And I think they could see that pretty quickly, that they didn't have enough money to do these advances, so they just stopped. You can't even apply for the the, uh, EIDL advance uh, anymore. But you can still apply for the Paycheck Protection Program. So this is something that I also applied for last uh, Sunday. So on the 12th, I applied. Effective on the 10th of April, you could apply uh, as an independent contractor, sole proprietor uh, for a PPP loan. And then it's basically a first come, first serve. So uh, what I recommend, though, if uh, for, for us, we, a lot of us don't have really close bank, you know, bank ties, right? You may have a business bank account, uh, but you don't really like have a banker, you know, who's like your, your banker for your business. Um, so there are these fintech companies that you can use, and they will process your PPP loan application. And some of them require you know, a lot of paperwork and some of them not so much. So, you know, you can do a little bit of shopping around. Uh, but if you do, uh, if you just Google uh, fintech companies and PPP application, you'll you'll be able to find some of those companies and apply, right? So I applied for a $20,000 loan and right now I'm in a holding process. So they've allocated money to my account but I haven't received final approval or I haven't received the loan documents and I have not provided a, a uh, voided copy of a check. So they're still processing it, although they've tentatively approved it. So this is the one I'm the most excited about because this is going to be, you know, that would be great to get a $20,000 cash infusion. Um, but, you know, I, I hold my chances at about 25% given that it hasn't been approved yet. And it seems like bigger companies are getting priority over little guys like me. But I still recommend you go and apply for it because if they get if they do put more money into the fund, which uh, Congress is working on as we speak, then um, you know it's a possibility. Um, what what the uh, company I use is called Lendio, L E N D I O, and they sent me an email. It says, "Good news! Your application has been accepted by the SBA, and a PLP reservation number has been issued. This means funds have been reserved for you. The lender will 
be working with you over the coming days to gather any data or documents related to final underwriting and closing process. There's no need to reach out to them directly. And uh, this company also had a um, webinar uh, last Friday, and uh, it was their CEO. And this company really, um, really embraced this opportunity, and they hired a ton of people to process these uh, loan applications. And they processed 70,000 loans. Imagine that, 70,000 loans. And I think it was like, five or seven billion dollars just through this one fintech company. Pretty great. So we'll wait and see. My fingers are crossed. All right. So what are the key takeaways here? Well, it's a process. It is an uphill battle. It's tough being a driver, not on the road right now, uh, because we're just kind of waiting. My philosophy is keep keep throwing fishing lines in the water, and eventually you're going to get a few bites, right? I do think the $1,200 is for real. Going to get that. I do think the unemployment is for real. We're going to get that. I think we're going to get the extra $600. That's for real. We're going to get that. And beyond that, I have no certainty. Um, I'm I'm hopeful that I can get this $20,000 loan, but we'll see. So apply for everything that you can. There's no harm in, in that, and it really doesn't take too long. If you need any instruction on any of these, just go look uh, in the Rideshare Guy. We've made videos about all of them, all the, all the different scenarios and, and how to apply and Uh, what to do if you get turned down for unemployment, things like that, okay? So, gosh, uh, it's just a crazy time, crazy time. I find myself um, kind of like, not bored, stir crazy. I'm working a lot, getting a lot of things done, but I want to get on an airplane so bad. I want to go to a beach. I want to get drunk on tequila on a beach somewhere. I just... uh, I'm not built to be in one place like this for this long a period of time, but uh, we don't have a choice, so we make the best of it, don't we? Just make the best of it. All right, that is a wrap. Fist bump to all you drivers out there. You guys rock it every day. Um, I know a lot of you probably aren't even driving right now, but for those of you that are, stay strong. Take care of yourself. I honor you. Thank you for sharing your journey with me. Be safe out there. Get the money that you can get. You deserve it. This is Jay Crater, Nomad Jay, saying this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.